We're delighted to have with us His Excellency John Paul Adam, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Seychelles and Chair of the Indian Oceans Commission. Your Excellency, we're deeply grateful for your time. Allow me to begin our conversation with a question related to small islands developing states. What are the continuous challenges faced by small island developing states in implementing sustainable development? Well, I think one of the biggest uh, challenges is, first of all, that uh, is, is the, the scale of islands. You know, we, we are, everything is, is smaller. And frankly, the way the international institutions are set up, uh, they are designed for, for much bigger units. I mean, even, for example, in terms of development assistance, it's always said that it, uh, the, 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 the rate of measurement is uh, GDP per capita, for example. And islands are always said to have high GDP per capita, and therefore do not benefit from development assistance. Um, but we always say, in fact, that it also costs us more to do anything else. And we don't have economies of scale. We can't decide to build half a runway just because we are a small country. We need to have similar infrastructure in terms of ports, in terms of airports, and it simply costs us more to do those things. So that's a big challenge. And then you have, of course, climate change, uh, which uh, is happening at the same time. And this is existential for islands. Um, the, the, there are many islands in the Pacific and uh, even in the Indian Ocean, Maldives is very badly affected uh, by rising, uh, rising sea levels. But we also need to think about the things like acidification of the ocean, the effect that this has on fish stocks, uh, what this means for food security. I mean, Seychelles provides 20% of all tuna on the European market, for example. Um, and uh, those stocks are going to be affected by things like climate change, acidification of the ocean. So the, the challenges in terms of sustainable development are that we, the things that are really important for us in terms of the economy, the ocean, our environment, which is important for tourism, are being affected by things that are outside of our, our control. And this affects us in a fundamental way. And what it does mean is that we're having to rethink what we mean in terms of sustainable development. If we can't actually address the issues of development for islands, meaning that they don't stagnate. Most islands currently have debts to GDP ratios of above 100%. This is a real challenge going forward. If we don't address climate change, islands may not exist. So those, those two issues together are of great concern for us. Let me turn to the issue of partnerships. How can partnerships among different stakeholders serve as an effective mechanism to support the efforts of SEEDS? Well, one thing that Seychelles has been championing is that uh, the, the call that SIDS is making is not to ask for more aid, in fact. Some people think it is, and they, they think that, uh, that there is a, uh, there's not, there's, in this financial crisis, in this time of economic austerity, austerity, there's no room to help SIDS. In fact, there's a lot of things that can be done that doesn't actually cost that much more money, but it's simply more about effective targeting of, uh, of, of certain resources, resources that often already exist. Um, one of the things that we're talking of in terms of Seychelles is championing is partnerships between islands. And we, we are co-chairs of the Global Island Partnership together with Grenada and Palau. And the Global Island Partnership is about uh, linking up the different uh, concerns of islands, uh, such as the, uh, the different challenges in the Pacific, in the Western Indian Ocean, to create, for example, spaces, uh, protected marine areas. We are also championing uh, uh, debt for adaptation swaps, meaning that islands could get rid of some of their debt in return for climate change uh, adaptation. Uh, these are ideas that we've been putting forward. There's also the SIDS Dock Initiative, which has been very good, for example, in starting uh, some initial projects in renewable energy. But we believe that islands should be, in terms of partnerships, we all really need to look with the rest of the world is that it's clear that the energy mix that exists currently is not sustainable for the planet. Islands use very, very tiny amounts of energy compared to what's, what the world needs. Why not use islands as, uh, in, in a way, laboratories for developing renewable energy economies? With a small amount of resources, you could make a few islands 100% renewable energy economies uh, by having the right mix. And uh, we believe that this is something that, that we should aim for in preparation for the, uh, for the next meeting on, on, on uh, small island developing states in 2014 in the Pacific. The 2014 SEEDS conference is envisioned to be a landmark conference to advance significant support for small islands developing states. What are your expectations about the 2014 SEEDS conference, taking into account what has been advanced or not from the Mauritius conference in 2005, 
Rio Plus 20, and the post-2015 process? I think the, that uh, islands are, that do share a certain amount of frustration with the pace of, uh, of, uh, of support that, that is uh, available to them in, under the international system because there are so many issues that have been flagged uh, not only uh, since 2005 but since uh, Barbados, uh, the previous uh, meeting, which have not really moved uh, forward. There is still very little, uh, very few mechanisms that islands can actually go to, for example, to, to enter into investment in, in for we, we talk about renewables, but even other areas. There's, there's relatively limited amount of practical progress. There's been great progress in terms of um, getting people to understand perhaps uh, the situation of islands. But there is no, the UNFCCC Green Fund is still not operational. Um, there are still no practical solutions that islands can turn to, apart from these small initiatives that are not inconsequential, such as SIDS DOC and so on, which I've mentioned before. These are important. But in terms of the big picture, there is still a, a relative lack of, of real concrete measures. That's what we'd like to see by 2014. We don't want to come to 2014 and, and be talking once again um, about uh, promises that are not yet fulfilled. So we need to have the Green Front operational. And we need islands to be able to, to, be able to benefit from that by 2014. And we, we are putting forward, we, say, we, are, we, we actually said yesterday in our AOSIS summit that we are, we are small islands, but we must have big ideas. So we're talking about, for example, let's make a few islands around the world 100% renewable energy economies. That's achievable in just a few years because we have small populations and relatively we actually use a small amount of energy. But we need to have the mechanisms to do so. Minister, we understand that you have a keen interest in the issue of energy. How could some seeds, in particular your country, serve as a pilot case for using 100% renewable energy? I think I'll start by saying that for islands, uh, the uh, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development actually did a study which actually showed that islands are 12 times more vulnerable to uh, the volatility of energy prices than, than other types of, of, of countries. And that's because of the isolation, the, high, the lack of economies of scale. Uh, we can't buy in bulk in the same way that other countries are. We are much more isolated and so on. So fossil fuels are a big challenge for island economies. Not to mention the environmental aspect, but just the economic aspect. So what can be done? There, there's a real economic argument to invest in renewable energies in these islands. Now, the technology is still, in some cases, experimental, in some cases, very expensive. However, once the technology is in place, you have something which is sustainable for the long term. Because for islands, the key problem is the predictability of, of, of uh, energy prices. So with renewables, it's, it's achievable to invest in something. And it doesn't just need to be investment in terms of grants. It can also be private sector investment. There is interest, but the mechanisms are not in place. There needs to be the right uh, mechanisms and established that can be replicated. And even in developed countries, this has not always been done. And this is why we're saying, look at islands as the place to try some of these things. That then it's easier to start small to go big. So we're saying start small in islands. And then what works there, you know, will work elsewhere. Your Excellency, thank you for your time today and your valuable comments. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.